Okay guys, welcome back. Um, so I just started up on Battle by the Sea, I just did the first five minutes. Um, I recorded that and I'm going to sort of uh, give a voiceover now and explain uh, the choices I make, everything I do. And just to give a demonstration of how you should be starting up on a map like this. So I'm going to play this, I'm playing this as if there were three players, uh, one in each spawn. And yeah, so I begin by pressing L and P, link the cannons, drop the uh, nav in spawn. And then I drop a nav on this geyser, and what this does, if you put a nav on a geyser and then you send a production unit to go to that nav, uh, they'll actually deploy faster, so that they sort of begin to deploy before they've in even finished uh, moving, and you get a full second um, the quicker. So the, the the deployment takes uh, one second less to to finish, and this this can be quite helpful. You know, a whole second is is actually quite a lot. <clears throat> in terms of starting up a game, you need to be as fast as you can, so that that does help in the long run. If you think every single time you, if you set a nav for a factory, every single time you undeploy it, recycle it, build it and deploy it, that's the second saved every time, which does add up actually, it's quite good. So I'm going to begin with a constructor, as always, and then I'm going to just sort of build a silo a little bit south. I'm going to do three scabs. Normally you just do two, so you can still afford um, the silo. I have four scrap left, so I could build a silo now. I actually go for three scabs though, because the, that the scrap in Battle by the Sea is so close to the recycler that you're actually better off getting the, getting the scabs on the scrap quicker than setting up that silo. So I'll do three scabs. And I... Again, so you hold control and three, and you press three to scavenge whenever you, whenever a new one is made. This just gets them moving a little bit faster. Every second you can save uh, really does help. If you add up the, the second saved on the geyser, uh, the nav on the geyser, the, se the second may be saved on telling a scav to scavenge rather than waiting for it to kick in. That can save a second, and eventually you're going to save up you know four or five seconds in in your startup, and that can be everything. If you imagine a player has rushed you from a side if you're four seconds quicker you may be back in time to to put a stop to that or you may be one second too late and they get your recycler so it really does matter every second you can save in your startup Building complete. Construction started. scavenger to scavenger by the recycler waiting for the scrap there it is i can now place a silo Dropping a nav by the silo so that I can send the scabs to that nav and they will collect a little bit quicker. Um, so the, how this works is that right now these scavengers are here, then they're going to collect here, and and then they're going to move to the scrap that is there, and then move back to the recycler, even if there's a silo, because it's just slightly closer. So if I have scavengers manually ordered to this scrap or to this nav they will then collect and then go to the silo which like i say when it comes to time it, it just it gives you a little a few extra seconds to to get the scrap in so that that's good to uh, to do um so there it is more scabs being made i go for six and the start up here so there i manually set two scabs to the scrap in front of me which is going to get them working the silo faster than if I just let them do things automatically. Constructor on follow, I'm now going to move to the northwest where there's a scrap field. So we've got six gaps. I'm going to have two follow, and these two are going to come with me and the constructor up to the northwest, and they're going to scavenge there. So there is a lot of micromanaging you want to be doing with scavengers, just to get them working at maximum efficiency. Otherwise, they're going to be not taking the most optimal routes to things. So I've made the factory now. And I'll get a scout up as well. There's the silo. And here, I've made a decision to get scavenger 5. Um, onto this scrap as quick as I can. The reason for this is 
again, if I imagine I'm playing uh, two people, there will be a player spawned just down this hill south, and it's inevitable that he will come for this scrap. So this scrap is kind of in contention as to who gets it. If I very quickly take the scrap, it's not even two minutes yet, if I move in and take this, uh, I could potentially be taking scrap that should have been his, but I've effectively stolen it early by um, bringing my scavengers really far up and taking it. Silos ready. Very important thing to do. Always refresh the scavengers in, in a sense that you hold control, three, scavenge, press it again after a silo is made. Because the thing is with, with the AI is they do not kind of update themselves. If you have placed a silo, scavengers will continue to go all these two scavengers, if they were already complete, fully full of scrap, they would go all the way back to the recycler. If they finished collecting after the um, before the silo is made, so just always refresh the silo scavenger or um, the scavengers um, scavenge order. Uh, this gets them working the silo for sure. Otherwise, they could go all the way back to the recycler, and that's not great because they're stuck over there, and you've lost time. So just remember that if you make a silo, good habit. Control three three, and then they've refreshed their um, pathing and they go back to the silo if it's there. So now, armor is up. I put down the barracks, as I said previously in the uh, buildings uh, video. Barracks are low priority for being destroyed. If a player roams through that area, that area here, he's going to go for the, the scavengers and the silo, but he probably won't bother destroying the barracks just because it takes so much time and ammo. And it does only goes three scraps. So this is um, kind of like a thing you can put down that's kind of guaranteed to stay alive, more or less. Uh, so that's nice. Place a barracks. Get five pilots. That barracks could come in useful in the future if there's a fight there. I now have a barracks ready for the APCs. I'm going to get the armory up. I'm going to get tanks going. Now I'm cranking the offensive. So at two and a half minutes, I am already getting the tanks ready <clears throat> just in case I get hit early you need to get offensive ready so you can respond to a quick attack getting the SP stabbers always get SP um, they are miles better than the standard AT and mini combination uh, they have extended range better damage better um, effective music like the efficiency in the ammo to damage is much higher with SP and what I'm doing here um, is I'm grouping my what you call normal offensive so scout tank rocket tank light tank bomber these are offensive units that behave kind of the same in that they, they have a full complete list of options that you can do like defend follow follow close um, and follow close actually works much better than follow I will explain this in like an advanced controls and mechanics guide but uh, follow close is actually better than follow because the AI will stay close to you and still fire. So if you have enemies ahead, they will shoot at them, but they won't race in and like, effectively suicide. They will hold the ground with you. They'll hold the position, but keep firing, which is really great. Um, and the problem is that APC does not have follow close. Um, so if you hold control on one, to select all the offensive, you cannot do follow close if you have an APC in your list or, or um, a walker, for example, uh, which is common, you, you will often have an APC with you um, and you can't order follow close if you select all the units of control in one. So what I'm doing here is I'm selecting the scouts and the tanks and I'm putting them into an F key. I'm holding down control and then I press F1 and they're grouped into F1 so that I can press F1 and then press 8 to follow close and these, what I'd call normals, normal offensive, will follow close and then I manually select the APC to follow Building supplies. Armory here. Building there we go supplies. Armory here. Building supplies. so yeah follow close is infinitely more effective than follow but you can't get it with all the units I choose to throw down a supply the reason why is that if I am attacked early um, I can sort of use my supply as a means to outlast my opponent if he's coming into attack, I can drop thumper, I can keep shooting. Um, and it means that 
if I have a supply with me, I, I yeah, I can I can likely outlast him in in the fight, and he has to retreat. So a supply is a great thing to have ready early. And one thing I did with the constructor is I, when it was, if I just get the map, hopefully when the map, when I change the map, to map view. Yeah, I actually recycled the constructor and then remade it. So it was over here and it made the silo. I then recycled it from the silo and then rebuilt it from the, from the recycler here reason why is you save a lot of time because if I had to wait for it to come all the way back that would take at least like 30 seconds um, and that's that's no good for a, for a quick startup so you recycle the constructor and you remake it at the recycler um, and you only lose one scrap of this you only lose one so it's it's essentially saving a lot of time at the sacrifice of one scrap which I'd say is absolutely worth it so the constructor is a lot closer to base now. I'm moving up to the northeast to take the northeast scrap field. Unit factory here. Building underway. Construction rig here. There it is, silo placed. No can do. Building. The I had a I had a scavenger with me on follow. So this scavenger at number seven uh, is freshly made, and I have it with me up at the scrap field. So I'm kind of micromanaging my scavengers that way. Scavenger here. Unit and what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to set it to follow the constructor so that it's close to the silo once it's made. I'm going to keep cranking out more offensive. I did two rocket tanks. And again, update my F key. So I'm going to update my F1 group um, by adding this, the rocket tanks into it. So I just basically re remake the group. and follow close so the scout said protecting rather than uh, follow the leader so it's going to be on follow close which means all those ai those uh, tanks and shit they're going to be behaving a lot more effectively okay and when that silo was made at the northeast i then did control three all the scavengers scavenge to update and to get the one following the constructor to begin working that that new silo I'll do a couple of turrets now again turrets uh, kind of a lot of people don't really like turrets but I'm placing them behind these spires here these sort of hills these mountain things um, in such a way that they'll be concealed and because you can't get them on radar they're, they're gonna go unnoticed unless of course my opponent is doing uh, what's called attack scanning which is where you keep opening up attack menus with your AI to spot things around the map. That's the, the only way to really counter the hidden turret. Um, so I'm going to place them down just as some kind of means to punish. So if my opponent um, attacks me from the side, you know, on, on Battle by the Sea there's three ways into a base. You've got the direct through mid, like through south, and then you've got the left and right channels. Um, if a player came in from the side, this turret might be able to do something or at least kind of give me a warning that it's, that it's coming ready to build. so i have them ready yes, sir. i recycled the constructor again at northeast and i'm remaking it just again to save time and at the cost of one scrap it's always worth it and we're approaching five minutes now and i have seven offensive I'm, i've worked three scrap fields my base and the two sides to see the two uh wings and I'm I'm ready. It's essentially, I'm ready for to play to play the game now. If I was going to be, if I, someone was going to come attack me now, I'm in a really good position to hold off the attack and to take that scrap that they may lose. And I'm really on on, on a good uh, path now to to win the uh, the game to win the game based on my startup. So I'm bringing the constructor down to put a gun tower at the at the mid entrance. And the reason for this is that not not necessarily that the gun tower is going to do anything per se, but it's going to be like an early detection system and like a warning that can tell me that um, someone is coming 
from the south. Because at this point in time, it's likely that there will begin to be some conflict, some, some fights going on across the map. Uh, my scavengers here on the, on the right side here are really exposed. Uh, and it is inevitable on Battle by the Sea that one of these sides will be attacked eventually. Ideally, I want the player to come here because I've already cleared the scrap. This is done. This this is uh, served its purpose. It's done. Over here, though, it's still gathering. So um, it could be that a player attacks here and they get a few scavengers. They get the silo. Uh, but I'm making the choice now. I'm kind of sacrificing that area by protecting my main base. So I'm, I'm here and I'm keeping my base safe. My recycler is safe because I'm with it at the expense of maybe losing scavengers. So this is a choice you have to make. You could be up there at the scavs now, covering them, but then you'd, you'd be done if someone came around the side and hit your recycler. There'd be no way back. So I'm choosing now to remain where I can cover my recycler. But by putting the gun tower there, south, at the entrance from mid, I'm giving myself a, a way to sort of know that someone's coming that way. For 10 scrap, it gives me a warning and maybe some damage dealt on the player arriving from the south. So that's why I do that. Not necessarily to, to destroy anything, but just to, to warn me and to kind of give my opponent uh, something to say you can't simply just drive in here. You have to um, deal with that first and that buys me some time. What I'm doing here, what I did there is I, I pressed T on the turrets and then open the armory to the to the minigun and then I press ALT to drop that onto the turret so that's a nice easy way to upgrade target the unit and then use the ALT key to drop the weapon uh, I give it minigun because it costs one but it doubles the damage and that's always worth it if you're making if you're using turrets at the very least give them a second minigun so there we go that's done gun tower up and that's just about it and so with this map um yeah you have you have three players spawning in the uh, in the corners and so i'm setting up in this game as if i am playing against two others so i have my area locked down and i got the two sides of scrap taken in i may lose one or the other which is fine because i have 26 scrap in reserve i've got seven offensive and i'm ready to go at this point so this is, this is what you do, it's a good start up and battle by the sea. Um, I have enough scrap to continue with maybe a hangar or another gun tower set up. And yeah, that's the first five minutes, or the first six minutes. And um, there you go. So I'm ready to go there. Ready to defend, ready to attack. Alright guys, thank you very much. Hopefully that helps you out.